Hello, Abundant Grace family. Thank you for joining us. And if this is your first time joining us, a very warm welcome to you. I'd like to extend a very happy Mother's Day to all the women joining us today. We need your help in building our online community. If you're on Instagram, you can find us at AGIF Shanghai, and you can also find us on YouTube with the same handle at AGIF Shanghai. Please follow us and subscribe to our channel so you never miss any of our weekly messages. Let's read the scripture as we prepare our hearts for worship. John said heaven would be great, not because of what is present, but because of what is missing. Let us read this text together and find out why. He will wipe every tear from their eyes, and there will be no more death or sorrow, or crying or pain. All these things are gone forever. It is well, 
with my soul. Mm -hmm. It is well, it is well with my soul. Now is the part of the service where we get to know our neighbor. This week's question is, what's a favorite thing for you about life on earth? You can write your answer in the chat or you can tell whoever you're watching this service with. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty wood, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in a neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Now, for the next four weeks, we're talking about heaven. But it's not going to heaven when you die. We're talking about what is at the end of all things, or the beginning of all things, or where is God going with all this, with creation, and with the world, and with all that is. Because there are so many wonderful things to love in this world, in God's good creation. Now, of course, here in lockdown, if you're like me, I can't wait to get out and do some of those wonderful things like running and walking and riding bicycles. And of course, we can do a lot of cooking now and eating, but sailing and let's just go with this here, knitting and painting and reading books to our kids and photography and sculpture and building things and dreaming things. The world is full of wonderful, beautiful things. Sitting in the sand by the shore, letting the sand squish between your toes, watching the sun go down. Or if you're like me, I like getting up early now, watching the sun come up. It goes on and on. The world is a, an amazing, wonderful, beautiful place. Truly, God made it good, like he said so. Climbing mountains, exploring caves, swimming in the ocean, sitting in the shade on a sunny day, splashing in the puddles and the rain. What's not to love for God? So love the world, and that world is cosmos, the world, the word that is for everything that is, not just people. God so loved the cosmos that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life, life that is in the body, a body like Jesus has, like Jesus has after he rose from the dead, like a body Jesus has now, those wounds still visible above. Life, life in the new creation. It's not sitting around on clouds. It's not playing harps. And God forbid, it's not an endless church service. As amazing as a great church service might be, there's so much more to do than to sit in a building in a church service. There's so much more. There's F1. There's rugby. There's British baking show. There's basketball. There's baseball. There's, it just goes on and on and on. There's so many wonderful things about creation. 
And God loves his creation. God so loved the cosmos. God hates sin for good reason. Sin destroys creation. Sin destroys people. And friends, our sin has affected creation. Remember a few weeks ago, we, we looked at Genesis and the creation story. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Cursed is the ground because of you. This is what God said to Adam. Our sin has affected creation and our redemption through Jesus Christ will affect creation too. Creation itself longs for our redemption because when the children of God are revealed, creation itself will be released from its bondage to decay. Listen to this. This is the climax in Romans chapter 8 from the Apostle Paul. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it. That would be God. In hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. When we are made new, all creation as well will be made new. Creation does not work as it should. And don't we all know that? But it will it will when the children of God are revealed, according to what I just read to you from Romans chapter 8. Creation doesn't work as it should. People don't work as they should. God sent Jesus into the world to fix individuals, yes, but also to fix the whole thing, to fix it, to save it, not to destroy it. Death and sin and destruction, in the end, do not win. God in Jesus has made a way to redeem creation. Listen to this. The Son is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Jesus and through Jesus to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth or things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. The blood of Jesus has affected the renewal and reconciliation for all creation. Yes, fundamentally, it's about people. People who are created in God's image and meant to reflect God's image to the world, to steward creation. That was our original assignment. God said, let us make mankind so that they may rule over the fish in the sea, birds in the air. Let them rule. But we sinned. And God intends to fix it, though, to buy back people and to buy back his good world through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. Death will not have the last world. word. Destruction and sin will be done away with. Creation itself will be made new, redeemed, renewed, remade, saved. That's what God's in the business of. Now, listen. This is a great mystery. Some, astonishingly, will continue to reject God's salvation. How can that be? I don't know. I don't understand why anyone would. And make no mistake, though, Jesus will return to judge the earth. 
And believe me, friends, that is a good thing. We want there to be judgment through Jesus. And he's the one through whom all things will be judged. God's given it to him. And the new heavens and the new earth will be free from sin. Jesus' resurrection from the dead is the beginning of the new creation. You see, at the beginning there is creation, and, and at the end there will be the new creation, and in the middle, Jesus, raised from the dead, the firstborn from among the dead, the beginning. Now, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, not in the clouds in the sky, on earth as it is in heaven. When Jesus returns in glory, when God makes the new heaven and the new earth, that's when finally Jesus' prayer, the Lord's prayer, will ultimately be answered. Okay, now, are your minds feeling a bit stretched? Perhaps. But this is the Christian hope. This is in the Apostles' Creed. It's in the Nicene Creed. We believe in the resurrection from the dead and the life of the world to come. Now, we've got a bit of work, perhaps, to get our minds retrained, reorganized, transformed, shaped by Scripture. I don't see anything in there about floating around on clouds playing harps. Now, I know if this sounds new to you, it's because our minds have been influenced by other stuff, Greek thought, other, other religions, types of thinking. But the Scriptures teach the renewal of creation, God saving it. He doesn't abandon it. He doesn't walk away from it. Stick with us. Stick with us for the next five weeks. Here's a couple of books that you can refer to. You say, John, I've never heard some of this stuff before. Listen, N.T. Wright, Anglican uh, Bishop, uh, Surprised by Hope, a fantastic, absolutely uh, paradigm-changing book for you. Read it if you want more. Or Randy Alcorn's book, Heaven. Here they are on the screen. This, my friends, is a fundamental cornerstone doctrine of Christianity, of Orthodox Christianity. It is a main thing. We're not getting into trivia here. The new creation, God making everything new, this is the Christian hope. And this is why Jesus' resurrection is such a big deal, as opposed to just his death. Okay, he died for our sin. No, he, more than that, he rose again from the dead. This is the beginning of making all things new. He's re resurrected to a bodily life. And this is why everything we do in our body matters. More on that in a couple weeks. Now, God cares about it all. When I was just out of college, I worked for an engineering company. It's called Thatcher Engineering. And, and we were driving pile for the Metropolitan Sanitary District in Stickney, Illinois. That's a suburb of Chicago, down in the industrial area. So these great big sewage tanks, at the bottom of them, they had lots of pile. Pile are like telephone poles, big long trees pounded into the ground. So a crane and a steam hammer pounding these uh, telephone poles into the ground. 35 feet long was a, like 10, 10 meters, 12 meters was the biggest of them. And then others of them were you know, as short as maybe only 10 feet or, or three meters long was my job to, to tell them what length pile. And then there was an inspector from the sanitary district, an old man, couldn't see that well, couldn't, couldn't hear that well, couldn't even walk that well. He shouldn't have been out there, to, to be honest, but he was out there inspecting on behalf of the sanitary district, and I was working for Thatcher Engineering. So the way this thing would work is the crane, would they, the men would wrap a chain around uh, one of these poles, and the crane would yank it up. Now, it sometimes when it would on the way the crane would the pole would come up, it would pivot. The one end would stick in the dirt and the other end would swing around, depending on the positioning of the crane and the chain and the where they hooked it, all that stuff. So you had to keep your eyes open, you had to look out, because sometimes that those poles would swing around and they'd just bang into whatever was in the way and just obliterate whatever it was. So you had to look out. Well, uh one of these times. And you can see where this is going, I'm sure. The the guys hooked a chain around this uh, telephone pole, started pulling it up, and sure enough, 
that that uh, telephone pole swinging around, coming around at high speed right for this guy. And he wasn't looking. He was sitting there looking in his book. Didn't, didn't have any awareness of what was about to hit him. I was standing behind him. I could see what was happening. I thought, what do I do? I got it. And just automatically, I reached out, grabbed him by the back of his collar and yanked him back, pulled him back out of the way. And that telephone pole went swinging right past him, right through where he was. Now, when I yanked him back, he was mad. He turned around to me. He's like, what'd you do that for? He was really upset. And I said, listen, do you see what just happened? And I said, listen, look at that. That pole went right through where you were. And then he just started shaking. And he was like, oh, thank you. And all the men, they're yelling at the crane operator. And that guy, he was so shook, he went into the, uh, the trailer. I never saw him the rest of the day. But that for sure, it would have broken all kinds of bones and maybe killed them. Now, that's what God has done for you and me in Jesus. He snatched us from getting killed. But there's a whole lot more he's going to do. It's not just fixing one or two or three or more people. He's going to fix the whole system. He's going to fix creation. Listen, God made us in his image on the last half of day six. But he cares about what he made on day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, and the first half of day six. God said it was good, except maybe the C. More on that in a minute. But there, God will fix it so there won't be any more sin. No more blood clots in the brain. No more blood clots in the heart. No more COVID. Eh? No more cancer. No more child abuse. No more frustration. No more bombs. Creation is groaning for this. And Jesus' resurrection is the beginning of the new creation. It's just first. He's first. He came first. He's the firstborn from among the dead. All right. Now, so far, we've heard from Paul in Romans and Colossians. We've heard from, of course, Genesis. We've heard from the creeds, Nicene and the apostles both. We've heard from Jesus' prayer. Let's look at the end of the Bible. Let's see how this thing ends. Reading from Revelation chapter 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no longer any sea. Sea is, uh, represents chaos and darkness and also separation, as we know, isn't it? A barrier that's difficult to cross. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband, and I heard a loud voice from the throne say, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people, and he will dwell with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and will be their God. Do you hear this? A new heaven and a new earth. Heaven comes to earth, and God's dwelling place is with people. It's not us leaving and going up to heaven. It's heaven coming to earth. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. And then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. It kind of rhymes, doesn't it? I am making everything new. Write it down, trustworthy and true. Remember this, if nothing else. I, God says, I am making everything new. Write it down, trustworthy and true. And there's more. 
from chapter 22 of Revelation. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. Creation without the curse. This is the new creation. This is how it ends, people. God creates a new heaven and a new earth. His dwelling place is with people. This was written by the Apostle John. Now, listen to the Apostle Peter. But we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. In 2 Peter 3, verse 13, this is our hope. God's work began in a garden. It ends in a city that has characteristics of the garden and of the temple. It's the new creation, the new heaven and new earth, God making everything new. And in the middle, judgment for sin fell on Jesus. And God, through the blood of his son, Jesus, has made a pathway for redemption, redemption for people. And when the children of God are revealed in Christ, all of creation will be freed from its bondage to decay. Jesus is the beginning of this new creation. Jesus, at the end, will come to judge the earth. And that will be a very good thing when he sorts things out and sets the world to write again and brings the new heaven and the new earth. Jesus' resurrection is the beginning of the end. Now, we're going to be getting into this in more detail over these next few weeks. I hope you'll stay with us. We're going to talk on this subject for the, the next four weeks today. We've already talked about it twice now. And I know this might be like hard for you to get your mind around some of this stuff. Stay with us. Read those books engage with the discussions with your small group. But this idea, this idea of the, the Christian hope, it's in the creeds, it's in the scriptures, it's in all of the, the, the New Testament writers, and it's in the Old Testament. We're going to see it next week. But this is why what we do in creation, in our body, matters. This is why our actions and our thoughts matter. This is why how we treat other people matters. This is of course, one reason why Jesus heals the sick, because we are bodies. This is why everything matters. Now, let me just make a comment about our songs, because a lot of our songs, they just, they talk about heaven. Okay, now, to be sure, there is an intermediate place of rest with Jesus that we go to his presence immediately when we die. Okay, Jesus said to the thief on the cross, today you will be with me in paradise. That is an intermediate place of rest. It is not the ultimate end of, of, of creation or, or the ultimate thing that as far as God has revealed to us, he will do when he will, he will create the new heaven and the new earth. So our songs perhaps aren't always as precise in their theology. Sometimes we just refer to heaven when really what we mean is the new creation. But wouldn't that be kind of fun if we say, like this song that I love and I, I, I think we're going to be singing today. When we all get to heaven, what a day of... Re well, what, what, how would it be if we say, when we all get to the new creation and the new heavens and the new earth? No, it, it, it's, we don't have to get into that much detail. We can just say when we all get to heaven. But in our minds, let's think when we all get to the new heaven and the new earth, when God re rescues, renews, redeems his good creation. And let's enjoy the songs, okay? And sing about heaven being in the presence of our Lord. All right, now today, we've 
introduced some bigger ideas that we're going to be unpacking over the next few weeks. But we've seen from the Apostle Peter, Apostle Paul, John, Jesus, the creeds. And then I gave you a couple current authors, Randy Alcorn and T. Wright. This is a central doctrine of Orthodox Christianity. When we die, we'll be in a place of rest with Jesus, but the ultimate end of, of what God is doing as far as he has revealed to us is the new heavens and the new earth. I Behold, I am making everything new. Write it down, trustworthy and true. And this is why everything matters. Stick with us. Okay, now I also want to let you know that it, just for fun, okay, keep our sense of humor. I would love to have you submit a video. Are there dogs in heaven? Okay, now by now, hopefully your mind has been open just a little bit. It, a better way to phrase the question is, are there dogs in the new creation? What do you think? I mean, maybe you've heard that, you know, people talk about that. Oh, well, dogs, you know, maybe, maybe yeah, I'm sure dogs, but not cats. Or, yeah, definitely cats, but not dogs. Or, so have a little fun with it. If you have a pet, doesn't matter what it is. If you, you submit a 10-second video by Tuesday, uh, May 17th. Submit it to Joe. Here's the QR code on the screen. And let's have a little fun with this. Let's see each other's pets and address the question, if you'd like. Are there dogs in heaven or are there dogs in the new creation?
There are many ways you can give here at Abundant Grace. The easiest is to scan the QR code on the screen. Alternatively, you can visit our website, www.agifshanghai.com forward slash give to learn of other ways you can give. Parenting is challenging at the best of times, least of all during lockdown, when you're indoors all day with your kids. Dr. George Hu, a mental health specialist, will be putting on a parenting webinar this Tuesday, May 10th at 4.15 p.m. on Zoom. If you would like to join or would like more details about the webinar, please email Jennifer at the email address on the screen. Starting today, Pastor John will be holding a series of classes reviewing our church values. These meetings will be held on Zoom and will create an opportunity to meet new friends and have time for prayer. The first class will be this Sunday, May 8th at 2 p.m. And the following classes will be May 15th and May 22nd. To RSVP, please email ministry at agifshanghai.com. Baptism is a big step in our journey with Christ. If you feel you're ready for this next step in your faith journey or would like to learn more, then we'll be holding some Zoom classes so that you can better understand this process. The first class will be this Sunday, May 8th at 11 a.m. And May 15th, there will be a class for adults and for kids. The adults class will be 11 to 12 and the kids class will be from one to two. To register or get more information, please email ingo.nureni at agifshanghai.com. Every Friday, we'll be holding our encounter prayer meetings. If you would like to join these prayer meetings, you can follow the Zoom code on the screen. Thanks for joining our service today. Let's say our benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and forever. Amen.